Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Divine Journey 2. So last episode we fought the Gaia Guardian, and we also overhauled our Batania area. We passive some mana infusion recipes, the Alfine Portal, Terra Steel, and the various versions of Quartz here. Our Blood Magic Blood Allure is now a tier 5, and hopefully we can get this thing upgraded to the final tier 6 Blood Allure today. So to upgrade the Blood Allure, we need the final tier of Blood Allure Caps, which is these Crystal Clusters. We made a start on these last time by making some of the magical tablets. And between episodes, I've been farming up some of these demon blood shards. Right now we have six, and we need a total of 16 of these things to upgrade our blood allure. So with our current configuration, because of the lack of blood orbs, we can only request one at a time. So I'll keep requesting these throughout the episode, but I don't suspect it'll take too much longer to get the rest of these things. One other thing we do need for these crystal clusters though is this crystal block. And we do have these automated. I thought we would have had enough for this. But if we want to request four, we are out of Electrotine. And currently, still the only way for us to get Electrotine is to do the Mark of the Fallen Tower ritual. So we have to make sure we have a million LP in our network, which we actually don't. <laughs> Let me go check if the blood orbs in the altar. Oh, it was in the altar here. It's just that I was crafting some more slates, so it did run dry a little bit. So there's a couple of other minor projects I'd like to do to start off with today. And the first one is to upgrade the spiked plate from Evilcraft. This is going to produce a much more efficient yield of blood for our blood infuser. And it looks like we've just maybe got enough to get enough dark gems for this craft. We need five of these gem blocks and elementium, which we were blocked by before. But after a little bit of patience, we can finally upgrade our sanguinary pedestal. And we get our quest. Just to double check though, we can't upgrade the spiked plate, can we? No, it doesn't look like it. Well, in any case, this should give us a lot more blood to work with in the future. And I have a feeling we're going to need it. <laughs> And we've also just hit a million life essence in our network. So we need to use the potency core, awakened activation crystal. And we're going to see an explosion any minute now. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was a bit strange. But yeah, more electrotine. So we got just over a stack from that ritual. Once we put it in the applied energistic system, it should all be sent to this little process over here, which will give us the silicon compound that we're after here. Yeah, and we get 6 dust per recipe since we're using this tectonic petrothium. The induction smelter is a little bit slow, but I mean, we're still waiting on blood shards, so... And speaking of blood shards, <laughs> let's order the next one. So, since we fought the Gaia Guardian last episode, let's also fight the Gaia Guardian too. But to summon this guy, we need a Gaia Spirit ingot. So we got 15 Gaia Spirits from the first boss. We also have the Terra Steel Automate, but we do need 4 Mystical Tablets. And to make these tablets, we need to Mana Infuse with the Alchemy Catalyst, our Magical Tablets, which we made last episode. I don't think we crafted all of the Purified into Magic though. We will have to request 4 of these things. Oh man, that is, <laughs> that is expensive. And that's just 4 tablets as well. Once we get those, we have to Mana Infuse them. So I've added them to that little interface down there, which should send it into the dropper and drop it into the mana pool. So we can see our mystical tablet recipe show up. I'm just going to do one of these at a time because it takes a lot of mana. <laughs> this should drop it any second now. Oh, I think it's just that the vacuum hopper picked it up too quick. <laughs> so we can add it to the blacklist here. So now when we request mystical tablets, they do actually show up. And I actually used a little bit less mana than I was expecting. So now we can create our Gaia Spirit ingot. Get our quest. And with our new multi-shot infinity bow, Hopefully, we can quite easily take out the Gaia Guardian too. Yep, no problem at all. <laughs> Man, that was a lot of mobs. But we survived. <laughs> Even if we are a little bit bruised. So the Gaia Guardian gave us another 30 of his Gaia Spirits. And his Dice of Fate. Let's see what we get with this. I think there's six different options that we can roll with this dice. I mean, it makes sense. It's a six-sided die. But we got... Oh, the Ring of Odin. I think this gives us extra hearts, actually. Which is probably one of the best trinkets you can get from this thing. Man, that was really lucky, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we get 10 extra hearts with this thing. That's awesome. And we also get 3 mystical tablets for the quest. Along with some cores here. I'll probably take the potency core since it's used in the blood shards. And yeah, the blood shards were up to 8 right now. Let's keep requesting some more of these things. So with access to all of these Gaia Spirits, let's encode the recipe for Stellar Alloy. And just a couple of episodes ago, these things seemed a million miles away, but <laughs> yeah, we're making actually pretty decent progress through this now. I was going to upgrade our armor set actually to the Stellar Alloy set, but we have to do a little bit of bewitchment first. And that is still two chapters away, I think. Yeah, it's in chapter 20, and we're just finishing up chapter 18 here. But the rest of the things in this chapter, besides maybe this Fae Crafter down here, is technically optional. And maybe this. I think we'll have to get into the Environmental Accumulator. But apart from that, I think all the rest of these things we're just going to come back for a later stage. As in when we need them. 
For now though, we just have to wait on our blood shards. So these crafts have actually been going quite a while here. We're currently at 11 blood shards. After this one finishes, before we craft any more, let's look at getting the next tier of mana spreader to help speed this up a little bit. This is just a rune of lust, which is a tier 3 rune, and some dreamwood. And you know what, since we're upgrading things anyway, let's just add some more runic altars. At this point, the elven cores are very easy to craft for us. We do need some more incense altars though, which is some more gold promise acceptors. And I'm really glad that we upgraded our blood production today, because I think we have 80,000 blood, which is exactly enough for this. The plan is to make another three runic altars. We need four more incense altars to make another two runic altars. Oh yeah, something like this should drastically increase our crafting time here. Or decrease, I mean, <laughs> increase our crafting time. Yeah, we have three elven mana spreaders with the potency and velocity lenses on there. And of course, two more sets of mechanical users and runic allers. All we have to do now is duplicate all the recipes in these interfaces, which is very simple with Trezor's edition of Applied Energistics, as this allows you to shift-click the recipes, and they will actually stack in your inventory here, so we just need to make three of each. And you can just put in already encoded recipes into the output slot here and it will automatically fill in the terminal here. So this is a really, really nice feature. All right, so now when we request our blood shards here, let's see how long it takes for us to get one of these things. Oh, this is a good sight to see. <laughs> we can at least do three at once. And yeah, look how fast this is filling up here. So you might have been expecting us to cut back and having four crystal clusters here. <laughs> well, that would be in the ideal situation, but some mistakes were made. Currently, we have two of these crystal clusters crafted and the rest are in progress here. <laughs> Basically means that we have to create some more purified tablets. Plus, we used four for the Gaia Spirit ingots and I didn't factor that into the counting when I first made the tablets. We are short seven more magical tablets, which is going to take a while. <laughs> And I'm actually not even sure we're going to get it this episode. Each of these runic plates takes 200,000 blood to craft into the clean plates. This is going to take many, many hours, I suspect. So it's probably something we'll get tomorrow, but that's okay. There's still a lot of things we can do before we finish out this chapter. Let's go back two chapters to 16 and we'll have a look at setting up some mystical agriculture. So right now, I think we've got access actually to the tier two and even maybe three seeds. Okay, the tier three we don't have access to. We need infusion crafting for this. But we can definitely set up tiers 1 and 2. The tier 2 requires the runic altar, and the tier 1 is just ender crafting. So the plan for our mystical agriculture is to put it in the void world. So let's start off today by planning out our farms. Oh, and even in this dimension, we can't escape the rain. <laughs> Always raining. So I think for our void base here, we're just going to make everything chunk aligned and it's going to be purely functional. One of the first things we should set up here though is an applied energistics connection. And so that we can access our main network here, we're going to build the quantum ring. So we'll need two link chambers. These are actually fairly cheap in this pack, all things considered. And we'll need 16 quantum rings. So we need eight quantum rings. And in the center, we just need our quantum link chamber. And the reason it's so high in the air is because we're probably going to expand out our main controller. So I would like to leave a little bit of space here. So now we've got our matter condenser, we basically just have to feed this thing trash items. We just have this hooked up with integrated dynamics since it's the fastest item transfer. And this is going to start filling it up with energy. Once this condenser fills up, it will spit out a singularity. And these singularities we can put in our quantum rings to effectively link them together. So that is also going to take a bit of time. <laughs> There's a lot of patience required today. So to actually farm all of the seeds, we're going to use farming stations from Ender.io. Since we don't yet have access to crop sticks, we can't duplicate any of the seeds we're growing. And they also don't drop seeds when you harvest them either. But when we do gain access to crop sticks, which will only be after we get extreme reactors and also, what is this? Cloud seeds? Uh, I think we can actually, we can do this, but yeah, we need plutonium for this. And that's not going to be for a little while. <laughs> I think there's still four or maybe even five chapters before we can get this. So yeah, the farming station can handle four seeds each. Let's see how many we're going to need. It looks like we can get away with just doing four farming stations to start off with, since we only have the tier one and two. And since we're making more farming stations, we're going to need some more tools for these things. 
And obviously we'll want to make them unbreaking, so we have to make a bunch of reinforcement modifiers. To make the modifiers we need one blank cast and a obsidian. And the tools will be made of prosperity shards. The speed for these things doesn't matter, but we are looking for the two writable traits, which gives us the extra modifier slots. So yeah, this way it allows us to put the five reinforcements on and make the tool unbreakable. Unbreakable. And I'm going to make more of these than we actually need at the moment, since we'll be using them in the future anyway. Uh oh. <laughs> I had this on the wrong setting, so it basically, I think it just trashed all of our cobblestone. And I think we're actually down to zero. Yeah, we had several million of this though. <laughs> Oh, that was a big mistake. Oh yeah, we did manage to get at least one singularity. We have to use some ender dust and TNT, and this will give us two quantum entangled singularities. These are basically the same NBT data, which allows us to link the two chambers together. So one of them is gonna go in this side, and the other one's gonna go in this quantum link chamber. So now we have to supply both sides with power. The other side should already be powered through our AE system, but we can give this side a power cell, and we'll also need an energy acceptor on this. Actually, I don't know if we can connect to the center. I think we may have to go to the outside. Let's put some ME cable here. Yeah, it looks like this thing is online. All right. So if we were to just connect up straight like this to different machines or devices, I don't think this would work as we're still connected to our subnet. Actually, you know what? Having this quantum ring like this is not going to work because we're technically still working off the main net. I mean, we could make it work, but it's not as efficient as if we were to come from the subnet here. This really wasn't a great spot for this anyway. <laughs> Yeah, down here is a little bit more of a suitable location for this. But let me know if you have any better suggestions on the placement of where we could put this. And just as a little test here, we have this hooked up to a P2P connection, which is linked to our main ME controller, and we have a wireless access point. So now we have access to all of our items in the void dimension. So I think to start off with, a little form configuration like this should suffice, especially since we can't create that many seeds at the moment. And this block in the middle here is the hydrator. I believe this thing just acts as a tick accelerator for the crops. So now we have to craft our seeds and also make some soil for this farm. And I'm thinking that we actually use this root soil here. So this sort of a setup isn't going to be super fast to begin with, but I guess that's what we're dealing with when we have the zero started seeds. But yeah, we only have the one essence right now. Let's work on crafting the rest of the seeds we want. And to make all of our seeds, we have to rely on this fun, <laughs> fun machine, the Ender Crafter. And yeah, unless we make some automation interfaces, uh, these things, which is not going to happen. <laughs> There's no way to automate this, so we have to just batch craft with this. So yeah, more waiting today. <laughs> this is only for base crafting seeds. We have to make the tier 1s, and then from that we make all of our different seeds here. And I think we may as well just get one of each. So we can make grains of infinity seeds, wooden seeds, seeds of dirt. Oh no, <laughs> I just destroyed half the base here. I accidentally right clicked with this bone pickaxe, and uh, yeah, I made up a bit of a mess here. <laughs> I'm glad that didn't do too much more damage than this. And we're going to make two ice seeds, which I believe is the last of the tier 1s. And one of the ice seeds we're going to fluid transpose in water. And this unsurprisingly gives us the water seeds. So that is all of the tier 1 seeds crafted. Of course we're going to make some more, as one seed is not going to cut it for, <laughs> for some of these ones. But in order to get the tier 2, we need to make Prudentium. And to get Prudentium, we need the Infusion Crystal, which I guess we only recently got access to via Terra Steel. But at least this thing we only have to make once. Or maybe not actually, the quest says differently, it says they have limited durability, but the tooltip says it's unlimited. So I guess we'll see which one is correct here. So yeah, it's 4 Inferium Essence to upgrade to Prudentium. And it looks like this does have unlimited durability. Alright, this that's pretty nice. Well I guess we can encode Applied Energistics recipes for this. Since you can only use the Inferium one to craft Prudentium. And we don't have access to the Master Infusion Crystal yet. But once we do have access to the Master Infusion, I don't think Applied Energistics will let us do looped crafting like that. So we'll have to probably swap it out with a crafter. And speaking of crafter, we have no more interface slots again. Yeah, this thing is filling up quick. And that's us filled up three of these crafting trees. So I guess that means we have to start another crafting tree. Let's see how long this one lasts. <laughs> And we may end up having to put them on this side of the room, or maybe even expand downwards to add some more crafting capabilities. Although by this point, a lot of the stuff that we used to have recipes for is now on passive, so we could probably purge some of the pattern slots that we have. Although it's nice to be able to keep some of the on-demand recipes, just in case we are lacking a bit on passive resources. And yeah, the tier 2 seed we can just encode for the runic holler. This should actually be 10 times faster than the ender crafter as well. And we've actually filled up all of the available pattern slots on these ME interfaces for the Runicolor. 
It's so nice to be able to have these expansion cards. Can't imagine going back to a pack without these things now. Oh yeah, that's really quick to craft. Especially considering the amount of mana these things take. Ah, <laughs> Cyclops getting damaged there. So yeah, with the tier 2, there's a lot more options that we have to, available to us. And again, we'll probably want all of these things. Although that is a lot of crafting, to be honest. So yeah, I'm going to just try to keep this Ender Crafter as full as I can. In the meantime, though, I have started planting all of our tier 1 seeds. And I did actually invert the configuration of this farm. Before, we used to have four farming stations and one hydrator in the middle. But that didn't seem actually very logical the more I was thinking about it. These hydrators have a maximum range add-on of plus 4. So these can basically do a 9x9 nine nine as their max range. Whereas the farming station here, since we're using Melodic Capacitor, can actually do the full chunk. And since we're actually not planting any seeds, I didn't think about this before, but since we're not planting any seeds, we can actually handle up to more than 4 seeds. But again, this, this farming station setup is only going to be temporary until we can get access to the crop sticks. But at least now that we have this setup, we're going to build up a small buffer of these mystical agriculture essences. And we also have the basic infrastructure set up in the void dimension. So the outputs just come from the bottom of the farming station there on item conduits into a drawer controller. And we have a storage bus connected to our AE network here. So with these essences, eventually we'll want to have dedicated crafters to craft them into the various types of materials that we can get from each essence. Probably on site here at the void base. But for now, we'll make sure we chunk load this. And we'll keep coming back to this setup over multiple episodes. And just a quick progress report on our crystal clusters. We have still nine runic plates to craft, which is around 1.8 million millibuckets of blood. <laughs> but you know what? I might actually just go and farm this. So I upgraded the blood extractor to hold 450,000. So this obviously is way faster than waiting on our spikes. Yeah, so that was about 10 minutes to get 350,000 blood. I think I'm actually just going to farm out the rest here. Yeah, six plates to go here. So many mobs here. <laughs> Alright, so after about 45 minutes of farming Appalachia, <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if that was even worth it, but uh, we're committed at this point. This is our last runic plate, which means that any second now, we should see our four crystal clusters. Aha, <laughs> this took like a full day to make these things. But we already have the altar upgraded, we just need to put our altar caps on. And with our divination sigil, we should now see this is tier 6. Yeah, these crystal clusters were just one block too low. Now we can see tier 6. Awesome. <laughs> Alright. So we get 24 elementium for our quest reward. The thing we have to make now is the transcendent blood orb. Oh great, this takes more blood. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I didn't see this. No. <laughs> 640,000. Uh, do we need anything else for this? Bloody dust? Yeah, that's another 10,000 each. Alright, so we're short another half a million. Alright, well we have enough to make our bloody dust here. We just have to fill this back to capacity to make the orb. So I guess that means farming more mobs in Appalachia then. <laughs> I was so excited to finish out this chapter, but nope. Yeah, the blood requirements for this part of the pack is kinda crazy actually. Although I did waste some of it, so some of it is my fault to be fair. <laughs> I wonder if farming in Omethol is actually more efficient. Probably is, to be honest. There isn't all those spellbinders about hitting you from everywhere. <laughs> Alright, so after a bunch more blood farming, I think we're ready to get our Transcendent Blood Orb. So yeah, we need 240,000 LP in our Blood Dollar. Capacity for this thing is only 163, so we may have to add some more Augmented Runes of Capacity still. That takes us up to 190. Let's just get two more, just for good measure. Alright, 223,000. I think this should be enough, as long as we can use our Sacrificial Dagger. And we may as well add on the extra Brick Paths that we have. Oh yeah, that gives us like 30,000 per sacrifice. <laughs> Alright, let's wait till this is full. Nice, our final tier of Blood Orb. So this unlocks the last quest in chapter 18, which is to get the Rainbow Tablet. So to get this, we need two Mystical Tablets. We got these as quest rewards. And we also need two more Rainbow Slates. Actually, I don't think we've made these yet, but we need two Ethereal Slates in a tier 6 Blood Allure. And we currently have 20 Ethereal Slates here. And these only require 120,000 LP each. It's still a lot, but nothing we can't handle. So there's one Slate. We'll give this its own drawer as well. And Slate number 2. Which means that we can craft our Rainbow Tablet. And we have finally finished out chapter 18 here. So yeah, this opens up chapter 19 and Thomcraft for us. 
So Thomcraft is a mod that I've kind of been back and forth on. I used to really, really despise playing through Thomcraft. But after playing through in interactions, I actually kind of am warming up to the mod. <laughs> and if you're wondering about the Thomcraft research, there is no Cheater's Thomonomicon in this pack, so you do have to do it, unless you want to cheat it in, of course, but no cheating here. We don't cheat. <laughs> We're going to be doing research, which is why I think we'll be doing it on stream. So yeah, if you're interested in catching a live stream of Thomcraft progression, that will be tomorrow. It'll be our usual time of 12 until 5. And then videos, of course, will resume on Tuesday. So now to start Thomcraft, I believe we need to make Salus Mundus. And the first way to make Salus Mundus is to grind down our rainbow tablet here. And then once we have one, there is a duplication recipe here, similar to the GP powder. And all of these materials we should have, I think, maybe besides crystallized mana. Yeah, but we can just add a recipe for this. And I think the rune of mana is the most efficient way to make this. So since Salus Mundus is something we're going to need a lot of to start Thumbcraft, we should set up some way of automating this. So the Lavender Quartz we have partially automated, the Pixie Dust we also have partially automated, <laughs> the Methane is fully automated actually on passive. I guess to do the Crystallized Mana though we need to passive Runes of Mana, which means passive in the Rune of Gulter. But since Applied Energistics doesn't handle duplication recipes like this very well, We'll set up a dedicated RF Tools crafter for this. So we're going to filter in each of the ingredients for our Salus Mundus. So this way, once we give it two pieces of Salus Mundus, and assuming we have the rest of these ingredients, it should keep crafting us more here. And we can input this to a drawer, which should be connected to these drawers over here. And of course, one of the first things you do in Thumbcraft is to make your Thumbanomicon. And it feels so strange doing it this late in the pack as well. <laughs> this is such an early game thing to do, but not in Divine Journey. So yeah, this is where our research begins. And if you're not familiar with Thumbcraft research, it's... Well, it's like Marmite. Some people hate it, <laughs> some people love it. Which is why I think we'll save it for the stream tomorrow. And also, I just noticed that the Arcane Workbench is made with the Ender Crafter, which means we have to make another one of these things. Oh, and even the Crucible recipe has changed. For this, we need an Evil Craft Purifier, which looks like this. <laughs> so, I don't think we'll be starting Thumbcraft today, especially since this takes even more Evil Craft blood. So, yeah, it'll be something for tomorrow for sure. So yeah, I think this is where we're going to leave it for today. I don't really want to pad out this video with, <laughs> with nothing. And that was a lot of farming we've done today, so just going to make sure this builder is running. I've been doing this pretty much every day, <laughs> just coming and resetting the coordinates on this thing. So yeah, our basic resources are actually looking pretty decent at this point. If we look at something like gold, which we were at zero <laughs> like three episodes ago, we're now up to 50,000. Things like dark steel, we have 18,000. Diamonds are a little bit more concerning though. There's only six and a half thousand here. So yeah, that is going to do us for today. Check out the stream if you're interested tomorrow for some Thumbcraft. So until then, thank you again for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.